speak to you in the name of one God, holy and undivided Trinity. Please be seated. I would guess that if your Thanksgiving day was anything like mine, it involved a lot of food, a lot of food. And at the end of the day, we were all stuffed. And yet, here we are this morning, possibly still digesting what we ate on Thursday, but we're here looking for food, for a wafer of bread and a tiny sip or dip of wine, even hungry for it. This meal seems pretty paltry, not at all filling. And at a glance, Thursday's feast and today's scraps have nothing in common. Yet, they are, in fact, one of a piece. On Thursday, we gave thanks as we ate. For the ancient Hebrews, the word was baraka, a blessing offered over food and drink. For Christians, the word is Eucharist, a Greek word that means thanksgiving. So in a sense, Thanksgiving Day is Eucharist Day, the day we are called to give thanks for life. And sometimes that is easy. We are in the company of people we love, having a great meal. What is not to like and be thankful for? Sometimes life can be hard, too. It can be bitterly painful. We lose loved ones, our relationships with loved ones fractures. We look around at a world at war, a nation where more and more people go hungry. People are sleeping on the streets. People are harassed or worse for their religion or race or sexual orientation or gender identity a world where children and young people die far too often. A few years ago, after doing the funeral of a young person, one in a series of funerals, I found myself asking a colleague for advice. Just what am I supposed to do or say? And then I asked God just what the Holy One was up to. And what good was God anyway when a 30-year-old dies? My colleague said, you are to do what you always do at a funeral. You are to give thanks for his life. Say goodbye to him and commend him to God. Now, bewailing the loss I could do, wave a scabby fist at the heavens, I could do. But give thanks? That one stumped me. And yet that is what I and a room full of people did. We gave thanks for his life. And somewhere deep inside, a light bulb went on for me. Yes, even in the midst of death, we are to give thanks. Even when life is at its worst, we, the people of God, are to give thanks. Trusting God to be God and trusting that God has a pretty good handle on it all and we don't. Perhaps part of the key to that is, while doing all we can to address poverty, hatred, hunger, the violence of this world, perhaps at the same time we are to give up our notions of the way life ought to be, or that we can fix it, or that we should have a free pass through life, and recognize the obvious, life is hard. People die in all sorts of ways, but we never, ever die to the love of God. And in between the cracks of life are a thousand reasons to say thank you to God and to one another for the gift of every moment of love and life in this world and in the next. 
The great Annie Dillard in her book, Pilgrim at Tinker Creek writes, I think that the dying pray at the last, not please, but thank you, as a guest thanks her host at the door. Falling from airplanes, the people are crying, thank you, thank you, all down the air. The people of God have been doing exactly this for millennia. The Hebrew people had Barakoth, blessings for every aspect and event of life. Bane or blessing, they had a prayer. If the news was good, it was, blessed be he who is good and does good. If it were bad news, then blessed be the judge of truth. It seems they understood that humans had a duty to pronounce a blessing on all of life, the bad and the good, because all of life came from God. Centuries later, the Celts understood this too. They had a prayer for everything, for all of life, every mundane act, every good, every ill, because it is all from God. The Hebrew Talmud says it is forbidden to taste of this world without a blessing. Now I have a hunch that we gathered together to ask the Lord's blessing on some level already know this. Anyone who has participated in the breaking of the bread and the lifting of the cup, who has given thanks for the life and death and new life of Jesus the Christ, we know this deep in our bones. We do not pray for and give thanks for the good bits of Christ's life and then engage in a series of curses for the rest of it. No, when we gather here for Eucharist, for thanksgiving, we remember and celebrate the whole of Christ's life, the defeats and the victories, the star-filled birth and the violent death, the agony and sweat of Gethsemane and the wonder of the empty tomb, all of it. Because looking back on all of it, we can see it as a whole garment, a tapestry, and pulling one thread out of it would damage all creation. So our challenge today is to see our own lives in the way we see Christ's, to give thanks not just for the whole wonder, mess, pain, and joy of Christ's life, but the wonder, mess, pain, and joy of our own to say thank you for the things we welcome, as well as the things we would do almost anything to dodge. Perhaps one way to remind ourselves of how to do this is to think about what we do when we hear a scripture reading here in church. Sometimes in response to a reading, it is really easy to say thanks be to God at the end. You know, when we hear something about God's goodness or love towards us. But what about when we hear about Zechariah getting struck dumb for being obstinate? Or one of the Hebrew prophets thundering, I will bring such distress on the people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against God and their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people, <laughs> says the reader. And there's a long pause as we contemplate our response. Thanks be to God? But we say it, don't we? We say it. Perhaps we're just being good doobies and we don't want to mess up the service. But perhaps when we, when we respond, it is an act of pure, blind faith. An act that acknowledges that it is hard to find the blessing in what we just heard. But we do believe that God is somewhere in it. Just as we believe that God is somewhere in whatever happens to us and to our world. Thanks be to God, we say, because we believe that no matter what, 
God's love for us, the tie that binds us to each other and to God is never severed. However bitter or convoluted our path through life can be, God is God. Our lives are our lives. We can love them or not. Give thanks for them or spend them consumed with anxiety, anger, and regret. This morning and every Sunday, our challenge is to embrace all that we have ever been and done and bring it right up here to the altar, laying it down and recognizing all our lives as sacraments, outward and visible signs of an inward, invisible grace. Every moment of our lives, an invitation to draw closer to God, therefore worthy of praise and thanksgiving. So happy Eucharist, and know that when you leave here, wherever you go, whatever you do, God goes with you. And there is no corner of your life that God does not already inhabit. Our call now and always is to be on the lookout and ready to shout out anywhere at any moment, thanks be to God, alleluia, amen. May it be so.